So during this episode, we're going to talk about a rinse and repeat strategy that incorporates relative strength and then validates it using our Canon IQ strategy. So stick with me. My name is Brian Cannon and welcome to Markets in 5. Before I jump into the rinse and repeat strategy, we're going to kick off with the uh, an update on the market. So, when looking at the S and P 500, we're starting to see what's called a called a negative divergence. So, when we're seeing price action continuing to rise, yet we're seeing uh, you know uh, RSI and MACD not rising. In fact, maybe even falling from its peak. Uh, that you that can serve as a an early warning sign to just just have a little bit of caution. So if we kind of think back to the last markets of five where I talked about seasonality, uh, where July is generally a pretty good you know month for the market for the S and P for the Nasdaq, uh, and and uh, however August September are generally not too good. And so you know it could just be interesting that this this negative divergence is happening here in mid July. So it may take some time for this to, to actually um, you know, come to pass, but, uh, but essentially this could be a warning sign saying, Hey, you really do need to be careful of August and September. And, uh, so again, you know, if, if it does break down or roll over a little bit, then we've got plenty of support levels here. So we've got obviously the blue lines from the trend, from the channel trend. And then we've got, you know, the 20, the 50, the hundred and 200 day moving averages that would all serve as a really solid support. All right. So when we talk about a rinse and repeat strategy, I mean, something that we can use over and over again, that has the basic, same basic look and feel, uh, but just some, some minor tweaks along the way. So when we look at the relative performance of the equal weight, uh, S and P 500 versus the S and P 500, what does that mean? Uh, well, the S&P 500, as you, if you watch this, you know, is a cap-weighted index, right? So, I, in fact, in the last uh, Markets in 5 and Seasonality, I talked about the fact that uh, the S&P 500, the top seven holdings comprise nearly 25% of the entire index. And if you look at the top seven holdings of the NASDAQ, it's almost 55%. So uh, they're very, very heavily weighted toward the very largest companies out there. So you're talking about Apple and Microsoft and Google and Meta and Tesla and JP Morgan. You know, so if those companies are all doing well, then the index is going to do well. And of course, those stocks are going to do well. However, if you start to see underperformance in that, that group of companies, the largest companies out there, uh, well, then it makes sense to spread your risk to the bigger uh, pool and, and, and spread the risk around a lot more companies. So the way we, we monitor that is through relative performance. So in the orange here is the equal weight. And in the black is the S&P 500 straight up. And uh, in, the, in the pink down here is the relative performance between the two. So obviously when this line is dropping, that means that uh, it makes more sense to be concentrated, to be in the index, to be in the top seven holdings. However, when the, the, um, when the relative performance is rising, that means that the largest companies are beginning to underperform and it makes sense to spread that risk uh, across a lot more companies. All right, so by now, hopefully you knew, you're knew you familiar with the Canon IQ strategy, but it, it's our machine learning algorithm that kicks off buy and sell signals. So uh, we can use the, our strategy and apply the relative performance to this. So so when we look at RSP, uh, RSP or equal weight relative to the S&P 500, uh, obviously, when that relationship is rising, that means that the equal weight is outperforming. So we want to slide our assets a little bit more toward the equal weight, spread the risk around a lot more companies. And then when we get the sell signal, it means that the overweight uh, index, the, the, the regular index, is uh, starting to outperform the equal weight. So then we want to kind of slide out of the the equal weight and slide into the uh, the S and P 500 uh, straight up and be a little bit more concentrated in, in the top you know names the largest names. Uh, so over time, by kind of rinsing and repeating this strategy, we should be adding alpha to to our portfolio. Now, obviously, if the if the market and everything's rolling over and we're getting sell signals on on the indexes and everything else, I mean, obviously, we want to 
lighten the load and maybe shift over to some some less correlated assets that can hold up a little bit better in a down market. But but essentially, I think this rinse and repeat strategy over time will add some real alpha. So in wrapping all this up, the reason we're doing this and looking at relative strength uh, is that, you know, ultimately, I think within this sleeve of our portfolio, uh, it should allow us to add some additional alpha above the, the index uh, over a given period of time. So, uh, But if you have any questions, give us a shout and look forward to seeing you on the next Markets in 5.